So in this video, I perform an engine cleaning, a full interior cleaning, and a basic wash, which I didn't catch on camera, on the 2007 Hyundai Santa Fe. If you wanna skip the rambling and go straight to the engine cleaning, then go to this timestamp. If you wanna to go to the full interior cleaning, go to that timestamp. Other than that, this was a uh, pre-sale vehicle that I was doing, so this customer was gonna sell her vehicle. So her words exactly were, I just wanna put lipstick on the, on a pig, is, is exactly what she said. So um, you wanna always manage expectations and you wanna know what the needs and wants are of the customer. And in this specific situation, she just wanted it to make it look a little bit better so she can sell the vehicle. So you always, want, that's a key part into like this whole detailing thing, especially if you're doing this as a business, is you need to make sure both you and the customer are on the same page with crystal clarity of what the end result is gonna look like. You don't wanna say everything's gonna come out absolutely perfect when in reality it's not because it's just not possible. And another key part of this detail is that I didn't use any water for the engine cleaning. I had water readily available. I could have just walked on over, grabbed the hose, and started using it on the engine. But just to demonstrate yet again that you can start a detailing business if you want without having the big van or truck and a water tank and pressure washer, you can still start a business and service customers even if you don't have everything you think you need to actually do it. Yes, you can argue it's gonna take a little bit longer, it might it might not seem as professional in the, customer's, in the customer's eyes, but in reality, it's the end result on what you're gonna do for the customer. If they like their end result, you're good to go. And two, it's always a work in progress. Don't think just because you're starting, just because you're just now starting off, you have to get literally A through Z all tools and products. You start what you can, start with what you can, and then work your way up. So this vehicle took me under five and a half, six-ish hours to complete, if I'm not mistaken. This was like last month that I serviced this vehicle. And it I charged $270, $90 for this service, I believe, because it was a full interior cleaning, it was a engine cleaning, and it was a wash. Not entirely, I'm not 100% sure on those numbers, but somewhere in that area that I charge for that vehicle. So if you wanna start your detailing business, uh, as I explained throughout the video, you don't need all the tools and products that you think you need just to get started. If you want a startup guide on the nine detailing services you should offer in your business, then check this uh, guide right here that I created, by far one of the most popular on this channel. Just check the description box down below, click that link, and get the guide and start taking action. There's nine detailing services you can offer. It gives you the time, how much you can potentially charge, the details in there, what's included in the service, the value from those services. So it's a very thorough guide. Check the description box down below for that guide and put it to use. Let's get into the video. And one last part is let me know if this 30 minute plus video is a bit too long for your liking. I was a bit hesitant on uploading that long a video, which is why I also didn't show the wash part because I didn't want to make it like a 40 minute plus video on what I was doing. So just let me know in the comments below if this video is too long for your liking. Should I cut it in half? Should I extend it even longer? Should I speed up the process and go like 6x, 8x the speed? Let me know in the comments below. Okay. Okay, let's get started with the before look on the engine bay. Again, I'm not gonna be using a water hose, although it's readily available for me just a few feet away of where I am. I wanna show you guys how to clean an engine bay, even if you don't have all the tools and products that you need, especially if you're trying to do this as a business and you think you need to wait until you get those items. Um, the condition of this engine bay isn't entirely bad. It hasn't been cleaned in a few years, but from the looks of it, it's not that bad. There wasn't like a huge spill or, you know, a bunch of mud and gunk just built on for years. So it's, it's definitely not in a terrible condition, but can definitely use a thorough cleaning. And now just giving you a before look on the top hood. Now I don't really clean the heat shield right there. I'll wipe it down, but the reason I don't clean it is because I don't want to get it too wet. It soaks, it might sag too long, it might cause some problems, and it, it might I might just cause it to um, make it deteriorate faster if I completely saturate it. So I don't really touch the heat shield too much. Also starting off, you always wanna work from the top and work your way down. That way you don't work over yourself. So here I'm gonna use APC with my lug nut brush to clean most of the uh, most of the under most of the top of the underhood. Now in that sprayer that you see right there is water. So I sprayed the APC 10 to 1, super clean onto the hood, agitated with a lug nut brush, rinse some of it away with the water, and then use a towel to continue to rinse slash agitate some of the cleaner and dirt. And then I move the long side of the hood, and I'm gonna follow the exact same process where I'm gonna spray some, wa some water 
catch it into the towel and then just uh, wipe it down so the product doesn't dry. And I'm gonna show you in a bit, but it's not perfect as you can see. It's There's still gonna be blemishes here and there, but it's just to get the initial thick layer of dirt off. And then later on, I'm gonna follow it up with a uh, with O&R and a towel to get off the, that, that remaining blemishes that I missed. Now, so it's definitely not to get everything all at once. And here's actually me using O&R just diluted as a clay lube and wiping it down with a clean towel. And this is where I'm gonna, the towel's gonna still get dirty because there are a lot, um, plenty of missed areas. But again, the point was the initial pass is to get the, the chunk of the, um, of the thick layer of dirt. And then this follow up pass is to get the remaining bits that I missed while making sure the product doesn't dry and essentially leaving it to where that's how it's gonna be for the end result. Moving on to the actual engine bay, the, this, I'm gonna follow the same concept throughout the entire engine bay with the same tools and products. I'm gonna spray down the APC, it's super clean, 10 to one. And then I'm gonna agitate with two or three brushes, which is the lug nut brush, the small easy detail brush, as you can see there, and possibly the long fender brush, which I don't think I use in this specific detail, but those are the, these are the two main brushes I'm gonna use. Follow it up with a towel to mop up most of the gunk. Spray some water to rinse it down and then follow it up with another towel. Again, is this ideal? And in this, in this, in the vehicle, with this vehicle that is not that bad, it's definitely not too cumbersome. Now, if it was super caked on, like I did a vehicle just last weekend and it was completely trashed, then this method probably take you a lot longer. But because it wasn't that bad, it's not that big of a deal to go with just, to go essentially rinseless with no water. All right, next, working that cow hood area. Now, as far as what towels I'm using and how many towels I'm using, uh, I don't, I don't, especially for the engine bay, I don't use that many towels because um, it's not that difficult to wipe it down. So the first, two, the first initial passes that I'm making with that towel, and then rinsing it down, and then wiping it down with another towel, I probably use about five, two, four towels throughout that entire time. Um, because I do one more pass around the entire engine bay with one clean towel. So I know I'm not gonna get every single last blemish off the engine bay because I know later on I'm gonna touch everything up with one final towel before I apply the dressing. And my big point that I wanna make out is look, I'm using two main tools, one cleaner and one sprayer of water. I'm not using dozens of tools. I don't need to make everything foam. I don't need to use a high pressure pressure washer to knock off the, the dirt. It's just, it's simply not needed. I know there's a lot of videos online uh, on YouTube with people using, you know, three, four different products, three, four different tools, three, four different towels to, to, to get it done. And it's fun to look at. It's fun to use all those tools. It's fun to say you've bought so many and they're, they're high end and that, you know, you're professional. But realistically, you don't need that many tools and products to get the job done. And if you are trying to do this as a business, and you're just starting off, you're gonna think that's a big obstacle you need to overcome. And really, you only need a few essential items to get the job done. Now, one thing you need to bear in mind is because you aren't using a water hose, then uh, you will have to stick your hands in some areas where you wanna be careful because you might bash your knuckles here and there when you're trying to dry or wipe down some areas. And this is the initial after, this is me not dressing it. I didn't use a blower to, to blow off the areas because uh, I wasn't using that much water anyhow. But that's just the initial state and what it is right after I cleaned it. Uh, of course, I'm gonna address it in a little bit and show you the after, but this is just the initial passing. It already looks 10 times better. Um, you know, you could essentially pass this off as a completed um, as a completed uh, end result and be good like that. Now, it's not perfect by any means. Uh, I gotta spend a lot more time to get it, you know, 
10% better, but you know, per what the detail was and what the customer's budget was in mind, it wasn't necessary. So here I'm using Meguiar's four to one, Meguiar's hyper dressing four to one to dress the plastics. Now sometimes I'll spray the, the dressing into the towel so I don't get any overspray onto the vehicle or onto any of the other components. But it's just a just you know per basis type uh, decision that I make. Sometimes it'll be on the towel. Sometimes I'll spray it directly into the engine bay. It just depends on what I'm working on. Here, obviously, I spread it. I sprayed some of it into the towel and then some of it onto the engine bay, and then I'm wiping it down. Regardless of what method you use, you want to make sure that you're evenly distributing the dressing across the panels. That way, there's no high or low spots where some spots look much more shinier and others look kind of dull because you didn't dress those areas. So you want to make sure you are spreading it, spreading it evenly throughout the engine bay. And there we go. That's the after. Again, this, this time is just the plastics being dressed. So it looks shinier, darker, richer uh, as, compor as compared to having the, the uh, somewhat faded out look um, of the plastic. All right, and now let's kick it into the interior. Now this was a full interior cleaning. Uh, this before is actually on 2x the speed, so that's why I'm moving kind of fast. Um, but yeah, so it, 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 this one was in a, in a moderately dirty condition compared to what I usually work on. Now remember, as I said, the customer said she just wants to put lipstick on a pick. So there was the expectation was not to make it look anywhere near perfection. And I say this in every video because managing the, managing the customer's expectations is where it's at with your business if you do want to service customers. You can't go under saying, I'm going to remove every single last stain, blemish, smudge within the interior, and it's going to look like it just got out of the showroom because you're just you're just not going to be able to reach that, that type of result because it's the interior, there's going to be scratches, there's going to be stains that just aren't going to come out all the way. So you have to set the expectations of, I'm going to make it look 10 times better than what it is, but of course there's still going to be some areas that aren't going to come out 100%. And the customer is going to be understanding of that because that just it's, it's just common sense that you're not going to get perfection from and I believe it's like an eight year old vehicle. So you have to you have to make sure you're managing the customer's expectations. And there's the rubber floor mat. That one's super easy to clean. That takes no time whatsoever. And and I didn't I didn't um, the seats on here actually weren't that bad at all so that was a that was a good bonus point where it just needed a little bit of steaming a little bit of agitation but the seats themselves weren't that bad there was other areas that definitely needed more attention like the door panels and the kick panels I believe that's what people call them uh, especially on the driver side but overall the seats themselves were not that bad which was great. And I say great because most of the time I spend I spend most of my time cleaning the seats more than anything else. And if you've seen any of my other interior cleaning videos, it's a pretty standard. I use APC again, just as the engine bay. I'm working from the top down, so I spray the APC, super clean, diluted 10 to 1, and then agitate with a brush. As you saw, I started with a detail buddy brush first because I wanted to see if that was aggressive enough to get off what I needed. It wasn't, so I switched over to the upholstery brush and I worked with that for the remaining of the door panels. Working from the top, working my way down. I use, I'm using that small bristle brush to get into the areas that are more that are tight that that bigger upholstery brush wouldn't be able to reach. I mean, you can find those literally everywhere for like one, like a buck or like a set of those for like two, three bucks. So it's definitely cheap. I mean, I've been using that exact brush for years now, which is crazy because it's it's still going for me. Um, so it's very cheap and you can use them for so many different areas in detailing. So here I'm using the combination of the big upholstery brush, a towel, that uh, black bristle brush, and then the upholstery brush. And essentially I'll use those four or five brushes throughout the entire interior. So again, going back to that, do you need so many tools and products in your arsenal at hand, every single detail? No, absolutely not.
And as you as you expect, the uh, driver side door panel was the worst because that's where they spend most of the time. Now, if they have kids or they just have, you know, if they have a kid either in the back seats or they have like a, a older kid that plays uh, some type of sports, then that side, that door panel or that side of the vehicle might be dirtier. But typically speaking, it's going to be the driver side door that's going to be the driver side area in general that's going to be much dirtier uh, than the entire vehicle because that's where the person sits most of the time. Keep in mind, when you're working in the interior, you don't want to let the product dry, especially if the sun's hitting you. As you can see there, the sun is on half the door panel. So on one on a bottom portion of the door panel, it's a lot cooler than the top portion. So I want to keep that in mind and say, okay, well, I don't want to let the product sit on there too long on the top, but I can let it sit a little longer on the bottom half because the uh, the temperature on, the, um, on that material isn't hot, it's still cool. But on the top side, it was getting a lot warmer and it'll dry the product a lot quicker. All right, and then moving back to the back side. I don't think I have to agitate this area. I just did because uh, there was a few blemishes here and there that I want to take care of. But I think you could get away with essentially just wiping this down with spraying the APC and, and uh, wiping down the entire area with just a towel. Maybe you'll need a brush here and there just to agitate a few areas. But for the most part, you could probably get, you can clean that entire area, which is just maybe like a light layer of, of dust uh, with just a towel. And now moving on over to the headliner. Now this headliner, I don't think it was that bad, so which is why I didn't record too much. But essentially what I'm doing right there is just using APC on my towel and then wiping down the headliner. And that's what I typically do for 80, 90% of all headliners that I encounter. Some headliners will need me to agitate with a specific brush, but that's, that's only if, it, if that stain really requires it. Next, moving on to the back side of the hatch again and working the, whatever you'd call that, same process, APC, brush, towel, good to go. And remember to always get the rear door. Sometimes I'll forget until the very last part of the detail where I forget to clean that top part because it's just kind of up in the air. It's, it's out of sight, out of mind. So make sure that you are inspecting all areas because that that um, the um, the hatch door was actually very dirty. And you know if I would have missed it, if I would have not cleaned it, and it would have been very, very, very noticeable. So you know because it's up in the air, you might forget about it. So always keep in mind that it's there and that you need to clean it. Next, I'm, and here I'm using the Detail Buddy brush instead of the upholstery brush because that material on the top part, the armrest part, it was very, uh, it, it seemed very soft and delicate and it, and it was damaged as you can see. So I wanted to use something very light to agitate that dirt away and then I used the more aggressive brushes like that black bristle brush or the upholstery brush to clean the sides that aren't, that weren't so soft. And same thing here again, the, the, um, the driver side, the panels. Uh, was very 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 dirty. Sorry for the shaking. This is uh, sped up at 4x the speed um, And obviously so it's gonna really magnify the shaking, but as you can tell it's a huge difference Now there were quite a few scuffs there on the kick panels So it didn't come out, you know to perfection, but like I mentioned we weren't going for perfection We wanted to make it look a lot better and that's what I achieved Now, for, as far as cleaning vents, I always do the same method where I'll, I'll spray APC into the small brush, I'll just take the vent, and then I'll wipe it out with a towel, and then follow it up with a with the larger Detail Buddy brush, the dry brush, to agitate all that cleaner that's inside the vent, and then wipe it down one more time. Now in my personal experience, which I'm more than certain is the same experience for everyone else, is that the driver's side area is going to take you the longest as well as the seats. Because here there's just so many areas you have to clean, so many parts you have to look, both under, side, above, and under. So this is going to be definitely one of the more time consuming areas you're going to work on. And if you follow my channel for any length of time, I will always recommend start with the heaviest parts first and then work your way to the easier stuff.
Okay, and finally moving on to the center console to the um, and the navigation and all that. Now this one we didn't need too much cleaning. Now be careful when you're working on the knobs or the buttons because if you agitate too aggressively with um, with uh, with really any brush or product, you can have the potential of smearing some of those letterings off or or erasing some of those letterings because you're you know agitating the actual uh, lettering itself. So when you are working on any of the screen components. Make sure you're going with the absolute lightest method first and then work your way up if you need to. But if you could just do it with a towel or a very light brush, just lightly agitating, that's what you want to do. Okay, and it, I didn't catch this on camera, but I did take the keys, turn on the vehicle, and move the shifter all the way to the bottom to the bottom gear. That way, I can clean all inside of that gear shift. That way, they don't you know they don't put it into drive, and then they see a huge gunk of whatever in the inside the shifter. So make sure that before you leave the customer's uh, car, that you take the keys, turn it on, pull that lever, pull the shifter back, so you can expose all the unseen dirt and gunk that's in there. And finally, moving on over to the seats. Again, these seats weren't that bad. I didn't need to go overly crazy with these seats. So it was just light agitation on the seats, followed up with a little bit of steam and then using a towel to mop it up. But it definitely was did not need too, too much of a thorough cleaning. Uh, now don't get me wrong, this basic cleaning did do its job and it did improve the condition of the seats. So they it was needed most definitely, but Compared to other videos that I make on interior cleanings, it no, it wasn't nowhere near as bad as the other uh, conditions I've worked on. And people always ask me, why don't you get an extractor? A steamer is not doing a good enough job. And of course, in an ideal situation, you want both a steamer and an extractor. But just given you know it being it being life, there's constraints, especially in my little mobile detailing van. I'm very limited on space, so I have to pick and choose what I can and can't use. And for now, my decision is a steamer is a lot more versatile. So I prefer to use a steamer because I can use it in many other areas as opposed to the extractor. And to be honest, this, I mean the condition wasn't that bad. So whether you use a steamer, extractor, or you just use a brush and APC, you'd get good enough um, good enough results here where the customer would be very happy and pleased. All right, and moving on over to the rubber floor mat that goes in the back. I use the Metro Blaster just to blow off any um, any debris, dust, dirt that may be on there. Then again, using Super Clean diluted tender one, spray it, agitate with the upholstery brush, and then mop it up with a towel. Again, I had water accessible, so it would have been super easy to just get the water hose and spray it down. That's what I uh, that's what I would um, usually do is instead of wiping it down with a towel, I would just go get that water hose, spray it down, then wipe it down with a towel and set it out to dry, or use a Metro Blaster to blow off the standing water. But in this scenario, uh, I'm just using the APC brush and towel. And there I'm using a steamer to get any of that, um, that stuck on um, cleaner inside the, the edges there. Now if you don't have a steamer and um, you just you wanted to get that out of there, you can use, again, use a spray bottle to, to, to spray that, those, uh, those tight areas out with the water. And here, this is literally just a video of me wrapping up some items. Again, I want to give you a holistic view of like what it's like to be on a job site. So for those that are just starting off, or you're not too sure if you're doing something right, or you're kind of nervous or scared of going out there, it's 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 really you know there is no right or wrong way to to how to work or how to move or how to be efficient. It really comes to just experience. Once you've worked on you know customer after customer, you have your own system. You start working your own way. So I just want to show you guys like what just a typical like that's that's what I do when I'm wrapping up um, when I'm wrapping up certain jobs. And here, 
Uh, I still have to do a wash, which I didn't catch on camera because it was just a basic wash. So there was there was real no value that I can that I can uh, bring out of it. But um, so it, it always makes me, you know, I always get a bit content in my mind that I'm wrapping up the interior job because I know once I start putting away products, I get a little boost of energy because I feel like, you know, I'm actually wrapping up the detail. It's been four or five hours and I'm ready to get out of there. So when it comes time to me wrapping up the products and putting them back in my van, it makes me feel much better and just gives me a big boost of, of confidence and motivation to keep on moving because I'm about to be done. And one thing I want to point out is, um, as you're working, you do want to keep in mind of, of towel usage. Mm -hmm. Now, if you only have, let's say, 20 towels and you're doing a huge job on an interior, um, you want to be very, very uh, what well, irrelevant how many towels. You, you don't just want to use 50 towels, 10 towels, five towels on one part of the interior if you still have like a headlight restoration, engine cleaning, interior cleaning, because you're, you will run out of towels. So keep in mind of your towel usage and manage your towel consumption efficiently. All right, and now moving on to the windows and glass. Now here, I'm just using two towels. I'm using the yellow one to initially wipe off most of the gunk and then following up with that waffle weave towel to get any remaining streaks that was caused that was caused by the initial pass with that yellow towel. So it's one pass with the yellow towel, followed up with the waffle weave towel. And if needed, which I didn't do on this specific detail, but typically I also use a third dry towel, a dry uh, microfiber towel just to wipe down any last bit of streaks. And this, again, in this particular situation, I didn't do that. I used a yellow towel to get most of the gunk off, the waffle weave towel, buffed it off and used both sides. But sometimes I also follow it up with one more dry towel just to get one last pass on the entire, uh, on the glass and windows. And don't think you're doing something wrong if you still see streaks on your windows or glass. Windows and glass are definitely a pain to clean and I, I think just about every detailer has trouble getting streak free windows every single time. Especially if you're working in the winter or in the like really hot sun, it just that, that makes it even more of a pain to clean. Uh, you know, you might be thinking you're doing them right then you pull it out into the sun and you see a bunch of streaks. So cleaning windows and glass is definitely a problem or at least you know an obstacle to overcome on every detail for most detailers okay and now that i've cleaned all the windows and glass everything is complete interior in the interior now i'm just wiping down the uh the dashboard because and i wiped down the entire interior because um there's pollen so i left the doors open for a little bit pollen's gonna get on the interior it's what it is so you want to wipe everything down one last time before you show the customer because there's gonna be like a very, very light layer of pollen in the interior. And this is the after on the uh, on the interior. Remember, this is why it's so important to talk with the customer and understand their goals and needs with the vehicle. From the very get go, this customer said, I'm gonna sell it, I just need to put makeup, I need to put um, lipstick on his pick. So it's just, look, I'm not looking for perfection. I'm not trying to get, you know, a crazy amount for it. I just want to make sure it looks better. And there, as you saw, I pointed something out. I didn't catch that in the beginning, so I went back and cleaned that one area. And that's gonna happen. Don't think everything needs to be, you need to get every single last stain. It's about checking your work before you turn it into the customer. So it is looking, you know, once you're done, once you completed everything, once you removed everything, you're gonna wanna look back and you're probably gonna find a few stains or blemishes here and there that you missed. That's absolutely fine. It's not about being perfect on the first go or making sure you catch every single last stain on the first go that you go in the interior. It's about inspecting your work, checking what you did, and then going back at it, whatever you need to do to get those spots looking better. So there I simply just vacuumed it because there wasn't much there and then I opened up the second compartment and there I actually took out that rubber piece, cleaned it out, put it back, vacuumed to give it that like new look. Now when I actually turned in the vehicle to the customer, they were absolutely excited about the results. They didn't think it was gonna turn out that good. Cause in their expectations, again, 
in their expectation they said i just want to put lipstick on a pig and i exceeded far more than that but again it's about managing the customer's expectations and making sure that you two are both on the same page in terms of what's going to be the end result with this vehicle if you're taking a, if you know if someone's contacting you to take their car to a car show and they want to win first place then you're probably going to spend 10 times the amount that you would as compared to someone just trying to sell the vehicle and they just want to make it look a little bit better to be able to sell it quicker and for a little bit higher price. And an added benefit that you can do for your customers if they are selling their vehicle is to take photos um, right after the detail and then send it to them in like a Dropbox link. That way, when you when they call you up, they say, "Okay, you know what, customer? I, I you know I get plenty of, of of people calling me that they want to sell their vehicle. This is what I do. And as an added benefit for hiring me, I'll also go ahead and just take photos right after the detail and send them to you. That way, you can post them on Craigslist or Auto Trader, wherever you want to take, wherever you want to post it." That way you don't have to worry about the photos. You'll get it, you know, you'll get the photos right when it, when it's like right after the detail. So it's gonna stay clean and you can use them to your benefit to sell your vehicle. So definitely do that when you are going to, um, when you're dealing with a customer that wants to sell their vehicle. That's definitely another added value point for you instead of someone else. All right, and that wraps up this video. Again, I did do a wash after that interior cleaning, but it was just a basic wash. I was, this was, it was gonna make this video 35 plus minutes long, so I just didn't see a need for it. So leave any comments, questions, concerns you have down below. Let me know if a 30 minute video is too long. I was a bit hesitant on uploading a 30 plus minute video, cause that's kinda long, you guys are busy, but let me know in the comments below if that's too much time. I'd be surprised if, if even 30% of the audience that watches this video makes it all the way to the last like 15 seconds so if you were watching this part let me know in the comments below if this video is too long if you prefer it just give me your thoughts on this remember check the description box down below for that guide on the nine detailing services you can offer other than that i will see you on the next video